Dan Fagella likes saying that we're crickets imagining the big game. Yeah. <laughs> exactly right. And so that's why God is actually, you know, coming from a kind of scientist who's not a kind of um, a theist or, or anything. Like the word, the word God is useful because it points to the fact that, well, what does God mean? It's another word, but it points to something utterly beyond words, right? Utterly transcendent, imminent and everything. Um, and so I actually have a kind of pet peeve, I think, in, in, in the kind of spiritual communities when we use the word consciousness for the kind of, um, for this ground of being, because mm. we're, we're now just, instead of say, instead of really sitting with the fact that the ground of being is truly beyond words, if we say it's consciousness, then we're kind of, it feels like we, it, it's tempting to give it a label, right? But I think it can get confusing because I would say, if you think the ground of being is consciousness, then you would think in that perspective that and at the Big Bang, there was some experience. I'm saying the kind of ground of being is some mysterious process and the Big Bang was not a conscious event. It was, it was unconscious kind of things happening um, and consciousness exists in these kind of reflections of living, of living, living systems. So it's, it's not that everything is in consciousness in, in my worldview, um, but it's important to understand that uh, the world isn't divided fundamentally into matter and mind. Everything is process. Everything is just this, this kind of strange creative thing unfolding, which mm -hmm. is what we see in quantum mechanics. If you try and say, where is that subatomic particle? Good luck, it's nowhere. <laughs> it doesn't have a, lo a pre-existing location because you're part of this kind of web of co-creation, you know, and what we call matter is not this pre-existing stage. It's this, this kind of, yeah, this process that gets co-created and consciousness is also a process. And so I think that's why you can author scientific theories of consciousness because all sciences is another map. It's a map of the territory and we can come up with a map that describes how matter behaves. We can come up with a map that describes how consciousness behaves and how they fit together. And I, I see no problem there. Yeah. Beautiful. So we are constantly trying to make better and better maps of the reality yet the the most simple way to say it is that there is a an indescribable this ineffable um and then there is that the, and there's a creative likely likely an a, an eternal creative unfolding um and that the unfolding has a feedback mechanism and the, the, and that feedback mechanism is this this co-creative uh, ability f for us to um, out of all of the infinite potential that you have as an artist that you get to pick what you want to uh, unfold in the in out of the infinite uh, potential what you want to collapse what you want to become so okay so an eternal creative process now the the reason why it's tempting I think to put to subsume cosmogony in consciousness or infinite consciousness is because there is no in a sense nothing else besides this experience that we are having and that in a sense consciousness is the tool that we use as from whatever perspective of that God or source or whatever you want to call that from that indescribable, we use consciousness as the tool to experience ourselves. I think my, um, so maybe my, my take on this is that maybe, you know, it might be because I'm a scientist that I, I want the problem for me of, of, of consciousness and also just as an individual who meditates and does this other stuff. The problem for me is accounting for, this particular thing that is like it's private it's this qualitative space of, of awareness that, that's here right now and you have it right and we're going to give that the label consciousness and we're going to face this as a problem like where does that emerge in nature right so that's that's one thing if if all of existence is in consciousness or it has consciousness or it is conscious that's it could be a similar kind of thing, but, but I think it won't have exactly the same properties. It presumably Fair. doesn't have like a boundary and inside and outside, pri like privacy. Oh yeah. So perhaps oh, yeah. it's, yeah. Oh so yeah. There, it could be something related, 
but we so we you know we could come up with a speculative or metaphysical idea of of the infinite consciousness but then there's organism consciousness yeah yeah um and oh, we can talk good. about those differently right oh interesting yeah. okay so as uh you know rupert spira talks about this and bernardo Castro does as well there's the screen the infinite screen of of consciousness or awareness and then on it is all of the all of these little perforated like dissociative um private uh consciousnesses and that uh organism consciousness as you said and uh, i like i kind of like that you know if we were to make some sort of a division of this one into two it would be interesting to do it like a a metaphysical consciousness that's indescribable and then like a little private or organisms consciousness in the whirlpools that's kind of interesting yeah Okay. And that, yeah, that kind of takes I, I, it from a scientific side as well. It, 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 and I, I, yeah, yeah. Which is very important. I, I agree with this uh, process. I, I s totally agree. I, I've lived too um, much in San Francisco and uh, the Bay Area is like spiritual esque community where there is a very strong um, tendency to um, kind of just go with whatever new age impulse arises, and that it's it's very important to. Um, it, it both embody whatever that intuition is, but also embody the science that comes along with it. So yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think for me, it's again, it maybe, uh, yeah, I, I, you know, if I spend my whole life in science, this might be just an interesting difference between, you know, t putting uh, our environmental factors might be what's what's kind of bringing up our, our differences, um, yeah, our, our differences on this to on this topic, and um, I do think there's a kind of uh, fundamentally, like I, I guess I, I've I've always been fascinated by kind of describing uh these things as part of nature you know nature is this like you know, it's, it's almost like spinoza had this idea like nature is god effectively like it doesn't need to be a personal god with like no yeah, or yeah. anything like that <laughs> but it's this it's just this lawful beautiful like thing that's 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 far bigger than us and so that's my kind of my scientific perspective is like when it comes to this kind of speculative metaphysical consciousness that might be bigger than my own consciousness um i guess i i kind of have to i i you know, I, I don't, I guess I, I just draw the line there for myself as and saying my job as the kind of spiritually mm. engaged neuroscientist is to think about this consciousness, <laughs> but I can't, I can't speculate about, about that stuff uh, as much, but also it's because of the, my spiritual worldview is, is also like, I, you know, in, in like something like the Tao Te Ching, you like, you know, it's, it's all about how, you know, the Tao that can be named is not the eternal Tao. It's like, if you're going to try and describe this thing by calling it anything, if you think you've got a handle on it, you're fooling yourself. It's, it's, <laughs> it's so utterly beyond, you know, we can call it metaphysical consciousness or absolute infinite consciousness. This, this is starting to get a vibe that it sounds very big. It sounds very grand. It sounds like it's the right kind of word, but then you have to realize that it's going to be utterly, it cannot encapsulate the ground of being like, so I, I quite like the, the spiritual side of me. It just likes to kind of come up against this mystery and say like, yeah, like I don't, I can't know what this thing is. I think it's unknowable in its in its essence. Um, and then the scientist in me is like, okay, do I think there's a reason to think the Big Bang was conscious of itself? Nah, I can't see any kind of mechanism by which that would happen. So I'm going to suspect no. And that's when you start to get into the these kind of fascinating questions of like what we might call organism level consciousness, uh, which I guess I'm just calling consciousness. Um, yeah. This is so beautiful because it's so extremely important to embody the truth of mysterianism and the idea of the eternal Tao that can be named as not, the Tao that can be named is not the eternal Tao. The idea that the more that you both truly surrender to the essence of the nature of reality, both very important, but also simultaneously balancing that with the true scientific spiritual inquiry into what it, actually that is. And like, you know, Eric Weinstein calls it, you know, the source code or, and, you know, really uncovering what that, what that is. And, um, you know, Hilbert talked about the, the importance of, 
of of uncovering that like we must know and you know whatever you know bohm was so focused on uncovering whatever the implicate is and like we must know and so it's like this balance between we must know and 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 probing at it with the mysterianism yeah 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 i think i'm a big advocate for kind of reining science in and putting it in its place when it comes to you know i i think that um you know, fundamentally, we're humans, we're here, we're having a weird experience of, of existence. And, you know, all of the kind of the feelings of awe and meaning and stuff, that's the first stuff that you experience. Then a scientist might come along and say, okay, let's try and do some clever tricks to come up with good stories that fit the world. And we do that game. And I, I fell in love with that game. I think it's wonderful. Um, you know, it clearly is, a, it works very well. It's what, what's allowing us to talk now. Yep. Um, so it clearly gives us some kind of knowledge, but it doesn't, eradicate just this immediate felt conscious sense of here we are and spiritual experience right this is for me is like the spiritual experience of of meaning and awe and and just existence comes first and then science is this quite should be this humble storyteller it should be something that you know and i guess i'm called, i'm describing science here as i would say science and philosophy like if you're going to make claims about the world try to do it as carefully and rigorously and, and uh, honestly yeah. as possible. Yeah. And I think, and I think that's why I actually am very happy to stop very stop short and say, what is the nature of, of the kind of ground of being? I don't have any tools for that. I haven't got a microscope to look at it. I haven't got philosophical tools to think about it. Um, and so I, I think I maybe stop short further short than other people would in, in speculating about what it, what it could be. And, and yeah, that's, that's just the place of, it's recognizing our limits as these kind of naked apes that came up with these funny ways to figure out the world. I would also plug here, Sri Aurobindo and the Mother Mira Alfasa talk a lot about the super irrational enigma that, that it truly is, and that it really does require a... The, when, when you use the body itself as the mechanism to intuitively tap into the nature of reality, there's going to be better and better ways to scientifically analyze the biometric correlates of these sort of awakened states. And that's going to be a very interesting way. For example, when someone has imperturbable peace and causeless joy, and w that's a sign of living in the infinite. That's a sign of being God or the Tao. That's a sign of being truth and butterfly affecting it out. And that's a very, you know, spiritual statement. And scientists would be like, what do you mean by that? Let's do that more. And I'm like, yeah, we can. We can totally play that. That's, that's very important. We must plant flags beyond the edge of knowledge. And we must, and this is what, you know, Richard Feynman, so many other scientists have been doing this forever, is planting flags beyond what's known. And then in a sense, making a hypothesis and then testing it, which we are, we are going to do now. But the Vedic Rishis 5,000 years ago, Parmenides and Heraclitus, we're talking about guys that knew and girls that knew the nature of being at its most fundamental level by leveraging what is just existence phenomenological awareness as what they believe to be that true nature of 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 who we are and and i think that i think that we must we must realize that science is that incredible tool set that that is very important to making a map and to understanding um enabling incredible things like like this and then to also um enable the other tool to to help which is in a sense this spirituality this like we like we we the, the, we can't we can't choke the god in man along the way um we have we have to enable the god and man to flourish at the same time i want to ask this this question this has been a a great back and forth there. I really liked how we talked about uh, some sort of a, um, if we were to break it into two, this like metaphysical first principled consciousness with this organism consciousness. I think that's a very interesting way to, to, to break that um, down. 